What's going on everybody? Kwaku here. Today we got a new build of Windows 10. I didn't cover the last build of Windows 10 because some busyness came up, but we have a new build today. There's a few new things out there. There's not going to be a very long video at all, but let's jump into it. So for starters, the first major new feature that came uh, or the first in the list of major new features that came in this new build, build 21364 in the dev channel, is called Task Manager Eco Mode. Now, all this jargon means, and you'll see it on the blog post, all this means is that the Task Manager now lets you throttle processes to conserve resources. So like, if you have a resource or a process that is using a lot of resources, you can limit its consumption so that you can prioritize other processes to make your system more responsive and more energy efficient so it doesn't bog down your system. So there's sometimes some processes here that will say they're using up way too much and they shouldn't be. You can now limit their resources by clicking on the child component, which is the drop down. And then you can see like Adobe update service. So right here, if I right click it, some resources let you limit it. Some don't. So let's say we're going to Brave Browser and I have a bunch of tabs open and things like that. I can right click Brave Browser. This specific resource, this child resource or child process of Brave Browser and you see eco mode. If I click that, it says, do you want to turn eco mode for Brave Browser eco mode with lower process priority and improve power efficiency but may cause instability for certain processes? Do you want to continue? I can say yes and then you'll see it says status eco mode, which means that this specific process, whatever this is, since Brave does not show you exactly what this exact process is, what it does, but this specific process is now in eco mode. And so it's going to not use up as many resources as it should. It may run worse because it's limited in resources, but it's essentially throttling itself. Now, in a segue, uh, Edge also had a new feature update, and basically what that allows you to do now in the task manager is it has Edge process clarification. That's a summary in that you can now see individual processes from Edge browser, such as extensions, audio, and others. So I have Edge browser open here. I have YouTube open, and I have just a tab, and I have some extensions that I've that I've installed from a while back that I use on Edge. Now, compared to Brave, where it's also a Chromium-based browser, but when I can see all these processes and I don't know what any of them actually do. There's, I don't know which one's the tab, which one is anything else. Edge, on the other hand, tells you which one is what. So you can see there's extensions for Honey, Ublock, Ultra Widefy, and a whole bunch of things that I have here. And there is the YouTube tab too, which has a leaf next to it because it's on eco mode as well. Um, now note that Chromium Edge also has their, um, their sleep tabs too, where if you don't use the tab for a while, it just grays out and goes to sleep. But you can also add eco mode to that tab. So you can see tab YouTube. You can see the drop down service worker. This is the service for this tab. And you can see it says eco mode right there. You can see some other tabs here, dedicated workers and things like that. The pre-rendering tabs, GPU processes. You can see exactly what is going on with Edge browser, which is really amazing to me. It's something that I think, I think every browser should have on every single computer and device that's out there, including Mac OS. You should always be able to see what is going on, what your browser is exactly doing on your computer, and now you can. So that's a cool feature. And then the other final major feature that came out that I won't really be able to demonstrate, but I'll flash a video on the screen for you to see, is Linux GUI graphical user interface directly on Windows in preview. So basically what that is, and I'll just show you the tutorial right here, um, and I'll put it on the screen in full screen, but Basically what that is, is it allows you to run essentially Linux apps and test Linux apps directly in Windows with full GUI. It's no longer just command line. You can run it full in Windows as if it's part of Windows and test everything you need to do with graphical interfaces. Like you, like Edge Browser has a graphical interface that makes it easy for a normal person to browse Edge. So that is the highlight feature of all of this current build. 21364 is Linux GUI apps running in Windows, basically WSL, Windows subsystem for Linux, because it does have a Linux kernel built in. Now, going a little further down, just going to drop down a little bit for some more minor things. We do have some Japanese 50 on touch keyboard things, so you can have uh, Japanese characters um, 
50 characters displayed at a time and a whole bunch of things. It says 50 on touch is popular layout used for kiosk devices in Japan, allows you to input Japanese texts intuitively without knowing how to compose hiragana characters. So that's another cool thing that you can do. So you can highlight that just by hitting the icon here and then you drop down you'll see it under 50 on. Of course, I do not have that because I'm not in Japanese. I only have these things here. I have split, I have small, and I have traditional. So exiting out of that, you can see uh, some more things. So some changes and improvements based on your feedback. We've updated the notification saying we need to fix your account. Most likely password changed. I guess that's what it used to say. To be more representative for what it is for now and now say select here to sign into your account and to continue using apps between this device and other devices. I haven't seen that myself at least i haven't paid attention to it so i have no idea but they changed the text saying that much like how when you update windows 10 sometimes when it says we have an update ready for you hold back it's going to be good soon or whatever it is how they constantly change the text on that this is another thing that they've changed the text on there's no visual changes in this build really necessarily um there is a bunch of fixes this is a fix an issue where explorer.exe would crash impacting users in the past uh, few builds, Steam Aware splash screens are now visible again. And then another one here, it says, we fixed an issue causing some USB attached printers to no longer work after upgrading to 21354 and higher. So there's a whole bunch of fixes as usual on these builds, there's a ton of them, um, known issues, there's a whole lot of them. One thing that they did say, and I'm not sure why they're not mentioning it here, is um, news and interest. In the last build, News and interest apparently started rolling out for all insiders, and uh, and now it's I think it's starting to roll out for the um, not release preview, but for the beta channel. I still don't have news and interest, and I know a number of people who don't, so I don't know what the case is going on there. But they need to get that part together. But other than that, uh, yeah, that's that's a brief rundown on the new Windows Insider preview build for the Dev Channel two one three six four. Let me know what you guys think. If you've run into any issues, I'm curious what anyone else has run into with this build if you're running it right now. Enjoy and take care.